One of the questions I get a lot is how should I print from Photoshop? We have a lot of clients who print some from home. They have a home printer where they want to try and proof uh, or judge what their colors are going to look like and they want to print with the same settings as we do. And I think people are often surprised when I tell them I'm really not sure how to print from Photoshop because I don't do it very often. It's very cumbersome. I find printing from Lightroom even more cumbersome. And I find that if you're doing any kind of printing at all on a regular basis, that having a rip like the rip we use, which is image print from Colorbyte software, that that makes your life a whole lot easier. And so we use image print to manage our printing needs. And I'll show you how we do that and kind of why I'll, sh I'll start off by showing sort of what printing looks like from Photoshop and why I find that cumbersome. And then I'll show you how we print from image print. Let's try and print something in Photoshop to show you why I don't try and print from Photoshop. So if we take this image here and we go to print it. Now I've already got a lot of this set up for um, print on this printer just for the purposes of this video. But you can see that if I want to print this image that I can print this image one at a time. There's really not a lot that I can do with it. I can't I mean, I can't flip it, uh, I can't duplicate it, I can't, um, I really just can't do much with it. I can print it just like it is right there, so it's rather static, which means I need to make sure that it really fits my media, whether it be a roll media or a sheet. And so printing directly from Photoshop, I find very rigid just in the layout alone. But aside from that, just managing the color uh, can be very, very difficult. So here, for example, I've already chosen the printer profile that I want to use. You need to choose your printer profile, uh, your paper profile. Right now I've chosen Moab Bright White. But all the settings are not here. Much of the, and you have to do two things. You have to first decide if you're going to let Photoshop manage the colors or if you're going to let the printer manage the colors. And everyone will tell you, let Photoshop manage the colors when you're trying to print from Photoshop. But even if Photoshop manages the colors, you have to go into the print settings here and set all of the things in the print dialog box here. Your printer options, your... Uh, any presets that you've got or paper types, whether it's a roll paper, uh, the type of paper, and just trying to make sure that all those settings are correct in Photoshop every single time you have to print uh, is, is just a lot of work and it leaves a lot of room for mistakes when you're printing all day long. So I really feel that when you're printing all day long, and this is part of your job, whether you be an artist or a photographer or a professional printer, that you're just a lot better off not thinking about the printing. And that is where image print comes in. And this is how we use image print. So image print looks like this. Here's the interface for image print. And it's actually a pretty good soft proofing tool as well, much better than Photoshop. And when you want to bring images into to, um, image print here, you can just go to where your images are and you can drag them right in um, to the interface here. So you have print files that you want to print. You can just drag them right in there like that, which makes things a lot easier than trying to open them directly from within the program that you're working. So if we look at this image in Photoshop, for example, and try and do soft proofing, which is um, to say trying to match what the image is going to look like when it's printed, you can do that here in Photoshop by uh, going to View. In View, you set up your, you will, um, set up your proofing setup here so for example if we're going to try a, a new paper I'm going to click on custom again <laughs> select the paper that I want to emulate and I'm going to pick Canson 
Aquarelle on the Canon Pro 1000, for example, using Perceptual. We usually print Perceptual. I'm going to say Simulate Paper Color. And that is what we think the print will look like using Photoshop, at least some approximation of that. Now, it's not very good, and I think most people will tell you soft proofing is not very good, but it does kind of give you an idea of what it will look like once it's printed. And you can toggle that on and off by doing Command Y on the Mac or probably um, control Y on the PC and go back and forth and you can see up here at the top here that we're emulating that paper but find that it's not very good and really don't like to use it and I find that image print is actually a much better soft proofing tool than is Photoshop itself so it's pretty easy when you put an image in here to see have an approximation of what it's going to look like with that paper type so for example, if I were to go over here and change paper type and use something, um, let's see, let's proof this on, show what it's gonna look like. Using Hanamo, let's, let's pick up, um, let's see, I want a Hanamo photo paper. How about the Epson Legacy Platine? How about that? Boom that okay apply that there we go you can see immediately that as soon as you apply that all of the blacks um, get darker and that is because the bright is going to show those places it's going to have a deeper D max and we're going to be able to see that um, here in the image print window so soft proofing much better tool um, and when we're proofing for for various people, now this this uh, will put a lot of jobs next to each other on one roll, uh, and this really facilitates that, which you can't do printing from Photoshop. So, for example, this is going to be a 24-inch roll on an Epson P9570. Um, we're going to go back to the Aquarelle here. And let's say we wanted to proof this picture and then we wanted to proof another picture or print another picture right next to it. So we're gonna take this one here. I can rotate that. I can size it like this. Um, I can just, I can do a lot of different things to it that I can't do printing directly from Photoshop. And I can put them all on one roll together. Let's grab one more. <clears throat> and print them all at once. So here's a 24 inch roll. I've got three prints that I'm gonna print all right next to each other. Uh, they can have different embedded profiles um, and it just makes printing a lot easier. Another thing that, that you can do in image print that you can't do directly from Photoshop is if you're doing any kind of production printing at all, once again, either as an artist or as a, a business, um, you can tile these out. So I can take this one for example and tile that and I'm going to put a little space between it so it's easier for cutting and let's say three rows and I'm going to do the same thing again and just it makes it a lot easier to manage your printing if you're doing like I said any kind of printing at all. And it's very very efficient for laying out different things from different people all at once. So if we were to print this out, it's going to come out on the roll and image print has a function that says um, inked area only. So if your images stop here on the, on the page, this represents uh, 30 inches by 24 inches on the roll. If, let's say for example too, that I just, I took this and made it two. So we stop there. The print is going to stop here right about 20 inches it's not going to print all this white space it's just going to print where the ink ends and in terms of all of your settings 
all of your settings, your job name, you can give it a job name whenever you print it. This is my job. And you can see what the page size is, whether it's sheet, roll, cut. You can see the profile that's being used here, the media type. If it's a different media type, you can just change it right here very easily. You're not going into those buried print settings like you have in, in uh, Photoshop. Um, if your papers don't match what the profile says, you're going to get a mismatch warning here. Um, under advanced here, you can actually go under advanced and it changed the thickness of the paper. This paper happens to be 12 mil thick. You can change your platen gap, your dry time, your feed adjust time, etc. All right there. Here as well, you can change whether it's uh, bi-directional or unidirectional. And all of your print settings are in one handy place, including your annotation, crop marks. You can see I've got crop marks on. You can turn them on and off. Uh, print annotation, got on and off. Find very, very handy. Print annotation is very handy when you're printing and another person is doing finishing because you can see a job name, file name, etc. And if you're once again if you're doing any kind of printing if you're printing on a regular basis all day long i just cannot even imagine going into photoshop and trying to print every single time it would drive me absolutely bonkers so that is how we print using image print from color by software find it very very handy Another thing that it does here, I should mention before I end this, is that you've got a print queue. And it shows the jobs. Now, we've got several printers set up here. So I'm going to go back to one of these, the big guys over here. You can see all the jobs that we've been running. And you can take a job that's in the queue if you need to rerun it. And you can drag it up to this window and rerun that job. So that's super handy. When you're running jobs with multiple prints, um, you're going to be running them, you know, a sheet or a bit at a time off the roll. And let's say I need to take that, let's add 100 of these, 100 each of these. I can just take this job and drag it back up here every time I need to add more prints to that job as I'm finishing and cutting. Gives you, it also gives you a history of your job. So if there is a problem with one of the prints, you can at least go back and look at the settings and see what settings were used. You can double click on these. Unfortunately, I can't do it here because I'm on a client. You need to be on the, the print. Most people will just have image print on the computer that they're working on. We have it on a server, so I can't double click on here and look at it, but I can from the print server. And you can look at a job and look at all the print parameters in that job um, and see if there was a problem with the print and see if it had something to do with the settings that were being used. You can also open those up and modify settings and run the job again. And I think that's a wrap for my introduction on image print and why why we use image print. A little shout out to the team over at Colorbyte Software. We've been using their RIP for over 10 years now. No, this was not sponsored. I just decided to do this. Um, we've been using Image Print for about 10 years now. I've used other RIPs before. I've used Onyx and a couple of other uh, RIPs, Caldera. But uh, ultimately, I think that for what we do, this is a very versatile RIP. It lets us use our own, um, our own profiles, make our own profiles, use third-party profiles from paper manufacturers, um, Colorbyte themselves make profiles, and so there's a, really a plethora of choices there for using profiles and uh, managing uh, multiple different kinds of, of paper and printing for different people. Uh, but we certainly couldn't imagine trying to print directly from Photoshop. It's, it's just, um, I know that some people think buying a rip is an expense, but um, it's just a huge, huge time saver for us and introduces a lot more predictability in our printing when we're printing for other people as well. Thanks.